for everybody joining me today and it's it's all about being honest about of the pressure that we are all facing because we all are part of um, organizations situations where the pressure is high and there is nothing wrong with it so thank you so much for joining me and those of you who don't know me i'm sylvia hi chris um an organization a psychologist and i help leaders and organizations build modern workplaces and help them also to understand their workforce because this is what often require or missing from organizations really understanding them um, the people who work with us and where do they stand where do we stand with them now today we are going to talk about pressure and i just want to ask quickly for you, uh, you guys that tell me give me a thumbs up if you are um under pressure um and maybe the pressure is between anywhere between seven and ten right now just give me a thumbs up seven and ten what does it mean right okay nobody's under immense pressure that's a good sign <laughs> Pressure is, is always around and the problem with pressure that is multidimensional, right? It comes from all sorts of direct, direction. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is that really organizations act as a pressure cooker, right? And we are ready to blow up anytime. Employees, managers, leaders, and we are all part of it. And as a result, what we started doing in the past one decade is really teaching people how to manage pressure, right? The other day I saw an article uh, titled that how to manage, how to overcome pressure to do even more. I'm like, oh my God, you're just putting on, you know, putting your foot down on that gas pedal already, your, your, the back, back of the, the car is already burning, but you, you just speed up. So, and as a result, we have burnout, right? We have stress, we have anxiety, we know the statistics. And what we're trying to do really is come up with all sorts of uh, well-being uh, initiatives and yoga and, and whatever we come up with, right? But we never really go beyond that. And instead of just putting something on the surface like a band-aid, start looking at what is causing that and many many times when we look at where does this pressure come from and we realize that the pressure comes from our goals our kpis the pursuit of those goals and kpis right and and organizations are so com uh, focused on on the kpis that they cannot see the damage they create or those kpis and goals cause this week I was with 16 senior leaders and, and I had to really, and these are the guys, their profile, their strengths, well, I run their strengths profile and they are the ones who are achievers, you know, they are executors, they, you give them something, they will get it done, no matter what. And I really love that profile because this is what organizations need, right? But at the same time, but we also need to um, um, consider that, okay, we, we get things done, but at what cost? And how far should we push people? Because I tell you that these 16 senior leaders, they did not really consider their people. When I asked them about their people, there was no really answer. And it took them really, really um, a, a big effort. You know, it, it took them a while to to start and putting themselves into the shoes of their employees. I'm like, okay, what does it mean to your employees? I'm like, tell me, speak on behalf of your employees. And they found it very difficult. And even some of them, when we did this exercise, they went, oh, these are the, this is what I would like to say, but in order to achieve the goals. So they kept going back to the goals. We are so goal driven, so KPI focused that we forgot about the people who are delivering those calls and KPIs. And this, this cost gets down to the, to the employees, right? So what I want to really uh, mention today that goals are fantastic, okay? We need them because people need to be um, uh, driven and need to be pushed. There is nothing wrong with it. But the myth that we 
produce and perform really well under constant pressure is just wrong. That is a myth. That is not true. And there are millions of research, and you can Google it. These are all available. Millions of research show that performance pressure negatively impacts performance and well-being. Nobody, including you probably, uh, performs well under constant pressure. Yes, of course, there have been cases, and this is what we, where we make a mistake. There have been cases where you've performed really well under pressure, right? And I hear that many times from people, I work really well under pressure. Well, I always say, not, not really. You deliver well under pressure occasionally. And then you try to apply those rare occasions to, you know, to everything else, to the wider range. So that constant pressure is just not something that is sustainable. And the conventional perspe perspective has oft often regarded performance pressure as an indispensable element, right, of, for achieving excellence. And we advise individuals and we train that, that if you want to excel or if you, you know, if you want to excel, you need to acquire the ability to manage pressure effectively. And that's true. But how far can we push people? I know employees that have panic attacks. I know employees who can't sleep. I know employees who, you know, committed uh, or uh, attempted to commit suicide um, because of work. So how far do we go? And what is my responsibility as a leader and as a manager? So what we do is really is that that minimal discussion about whether this pressure could have detrimental impact is we don't do these dis discussions. We just keep marching on, you know, convince ourselves that in the long run, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to pay off and handling pressure is good. And all we have to do is teach people how to handle pressure. Yes, absolutely. We do because pressure is great, great. But all those corporate goals and KPIs that carefully really manipulate us um, and the need for us to perform. Because if we don't, we are nobody, right? And those performances, is, 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 it looks very different. And performances sometimes look tighter. So performance sometimes look like status, bonuses, corporate results or the KPIs, right? Behaving according to certain standards or a made up competency framework, right? Talent would come with the made up competency framework. This is how you need to behave. The moment I need to start behaving somebody like somebody else, that is an immense pressure on human beings. And so we push this and instead of easing the pressure, what we do is it's we, we, we just we just convince people that you are wrong because you haven't learned how to manage pressure instead of putting the brake on it instead of as leaders you know start looking at okay how do I where do I, how far do I go with my employees and I asked this question from these leaders and like do you actually look at your employees and from the perspective of, okay, how much pressure are they under right now, right? Because the senior leaders would be under different pressure. Senior leaders are all about performance and all about stakeholder management, KPIs, right? Then you have the mid-managers. Mid-managers are under different pressure. They are the ones who are pulled between the two line employees and then the higher management to deliver the same KPIs. So we are all about KPIs. And then the, 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 the line employees are also pressured to deliver, but the pressure looks very different. I have known restaurant employees who had, who were under such a great pressure from the restaurant general manager that they, they did not perform. And the manager, instead of stopping and seeing what is happening to my people, why is everybody so nervous, so anxious, so demotivated, they kept just pushing. And I said, I'm like, hold on, you guys, just stop, because nobody can perform under constant pressure. And when we remove the management, all of a sudden, this relief, you know, and what I had to do with this, the particular general manager, a restaurant general manager, is teach her that, look, you cannot cascade your pressure and give it to your staff. 
because first of all, they are not paid for it. Second of all, they don't know how to measure that level or um, handle that level of pressure. This is given to you based on your role, your title and your benefit package. And you want to give it to them. So delivering results causes pressure and cascades down all the way to the, 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 the bottom of the organization and is coming from the top. But they all look different, but they all have the same purpose is achieving business result. And it is very, very sad because how do my employees feel that that should be the very first question of any leader and any manager? And it's really all about, um, you know, can I have this conversation with my line manager? Can I have this um, um, conversation with my supervisor? and asking them who is about to break. Because I, I tell you something, I'm kind, I'm, I'm strong, you can push me. But, and I, I get my head down and I get things done. But when I left on the 1st of January, I mean this year, and I worked super, super hard for like two and a half years, right? I had to manage two hotel openings and all that. And I loved every moment and I love working. So for me to work 24 seven, it's okay. But then there were some problems around within the team, which put extra pressure on us and all that. And you know, my coping mechanism is to keep going and just produce more, you know? And I, I thrive in that kind of info, environment that I just need to produce and I, you know, get more th things done, finish more projects, etc., etc. And then when I left on the 1st of January, I slept for two weeks, first two weeks of January. And I never even, I never felt that I'm tired or exhausted or burned out. I don't even know what, it, what I call it because I did not feel it. I just kept going. And I never sleep, you know, I sleep between 10 and 5. And I slept, I used to wake up at 8 and 9 a.m. I never slept until 9 a.m. since, I can't remember, never probably. So this is what it looks like. And has maybe if somebody asked me, how do you feel? Maybe I would have sat down and think about it, but nobody ever asked me, how do you feel? And I, therefore I just kept going. The other day I heard, I was talking to one of our um, colleagues and there was a colleague who wanted to take his life because of work pressure. So the question is, what kind of environment do we create as leaders and managers that we have employees who are just, you know, ready to blow up at any moment? And that looks very differently. And we don't have the answer to that because the answer is from the higher management, yes, but we need to deliver the KPIs. So <laughs> how do you reply to that, to a leader? You're going to explain it to them that, you know, um, you, you, your people are getting it done. Well, the best thing that we can probably do is to make them understand that that pressure has actually a negative impact on the very same KPIs and goals that they are trying to achieve. Because we know that one in four people are struggling with performance at least weekly, once a week, due to stress, anxiety, and other pressure at work. The, the other, other statistics that I brought to you today, that is 63% report struggling at least monthly. And 5% says that, you know what, I, dis, uh, I uh, struggle daily. You have 5% of your workforce who is struggling daily to perform. How is it going? Because of work pressure, because of, because of the pressure that we put on people. So how productive is that, that we apply the pressure to perform, but the very same pressure causing them not to perform? <laughs> And it is really all about, you know, how far can I push my people? And looking back uh, or sitting back and looking, is this the right way of doing it? Because I tell you something and just give me a hand, a, a thumbs up. If you have ever sat, uh, you know, looked at your team as a leader, or as a manager and ask yourself the question, is it the right time to push? 
Is it the right time to ease the pressure? Is it the right time to even start thinking about it? Very good, thank you Mauricio. Thank you guys, thank you. These are the questions that we need to, okay, is this the right time to even have a conversation about it? Because we can't always push. Sometimes, you know, in the hotel industry, because I see hoteliers in here, and maybe retail as well is very relatable because this is the service industry, right? In December, if I, when I was working in, in hotels, you know, I always told the staff, don't train during December. I never asked them to do anything in December from the L&D and talent side. Nothing, because December is the time to produce. Like we prepared you for, uh, for 11 months to produce during the, the festive season. So I never ask anything from any department to do for me in terms of L&D and talent. Submit your annual appraisal. That's all I wanted them to do because that's, you know. But I always said even to the line managers, to the to restaurant managers, to, to the head of departments, don't train. Don't, don't give me a training report. Now, if you do that, fantastic. If you still have the time, let the team just focus on what they need to do. Christmas, New Year's Eve, festive season is hectic for all of us, right? So we don't need an extra layer of pressure. We have done the work for 11 months. Now they're supposed to be able to perform without training or anything. You know, this is, when, this is how you release the pressure. Stop, guys. This month, all we do is enjoy the time with service and our guest. Nothing else. I'm not going to ask you any kind of KPIs. Because if you haven't achieved your KPIs in the last 11 months, well, one month, you're not going to catch up on anything. I tell you that. And I have seen that, you know. And if it's revenue, well, then you should be on the floor, right? And dealing with your customers and enjoying that interaction because that's what's going to create revenue or produce revenue. So how do you as leaders make that happen in your department? These are the questions that I ask from senior leaders. How do you make that happen? Because we all can, it's just a matter of, um, you know, asking how, how, do you, how do I do that? Now, if you guys have an idea, I'm happy to um, open up the line and just briefly, what, what, how can we do that? So the question is, and this is what I would like to get, if you could guys um, contribute to this, how do you as a leader within whatever organization you work, how do you take your foot off the gas pedal when you feel that your team members are under pressure and ease the pressure? What, how does it look like in you, with, with, with your team or along um, in your industry? I gave you an example. So, what is it that you can you can do? Barry, I'm gonna open you up a little bit. We be good, just one second. And here you are. So tell me how do you how do you ease the pressure on your team members? Or what is it that we could do? Well, good morning, Sylvia. How are you doing this morning? I'm Fantastic good, morning. Chris. How are you? I am doing great because today is another great day to be alive and another gift, not only to receive. But to give as well. Sure. I like to put this into the mix in and of itself because you're talking about leadership and how you grade it from a culture standpoint and also from an organizational standpoint. Maybe think about this to probably get to the place not only where you want to go, but maybe where they want to go. Maybe let's flip the script for just a moment and see it from their point of view where they truly really want to go. Ask them, where is their journey they want to start upon and what are the things that really not only matter most to them, but how do they see themselves achieving one milestone after the next? How will that look like? How will that be produced? How can you see yourself getting there? Is just there one way or is there multiple ways? And when we start doing it from that kind of dynamic, it's not about high or low performance it's what works best for them because see again we actually do it from a perception kind of dynamic whether it be leadership management whatever the case may be because we think that perception is actually the reality when actually the reality is the reality in and of itself 
And once we allow that to come into, or not only in our leadership, but also into our partners, not employees, because I want to have a partner in place. Because see, if I invest in them and they invest in me, the best investment is the human investment. An employee doesn't really see that because see, talk might be cheap. People might end up saying, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. And they hold you to that such high standard because they don't even really see the forest before the trees. And I truly believe this will be the way forward because see, again, what John C. Maxwell says in his great book, The 21 Info Laws of Leadership, the greatest myth out there is we equate leadership and management to be one and the same, but they're two polar opposite spectrum. And you kind of hit on it just a little bit ago. Uh, it's like also what John C. Maxwell says, nobody knows how much you know until they know how much you care. And I truly believe, I mean, not only we, we bring care into the mix, but also seeing that other point of view from their eyes and we make it about them and not about us, then we can really have not only a great opportunity to grow and thrive together, but also thinking this in context, what is the next currency of humanity going to be rooted on? Is it money? No, I truly believe the next currency of humanity is going to be rooted in value because when we bestow value on the people, and they know it and they see it and it's tangible to them. Not only will they follow you and work with you, but they will end up pouring their heart and soul into everything because they see the bigger outcome at play that they are actually literally Sylvia, a part of something bigger than of themselves. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and thank you very much, Chris. It, it is totally that. It's more about that side of the, of the motivation. But really, it's all about how do we ease the pressure, right? Because here is the thing. Um, leading leaders and managers, we have, and I wrote about it actually today, we have, not, we have outsourced our communication to HR with our team members. And we are not talking to our team members. We literally looked or took or uh, outsourced the communication and, and told HR, hey, HR people, can you please check what, what, what motivates my employees? Can you please check what, what, what rewards do they want? Can you please check how engaged they are? And we don't have these conversations. And when we don't have these conversations, we're going to end up in, in under pressure because guess what? Who, who is your team members working with? They are working with you. So they don't need to go to anybody else. The only person who can ease the pressure on me is my line manager, is my leader. But the problem is that we have conditioned the leaders and managers to follow that goal. You know, it's the carrot and the stick. We incentivize their performance and we never incentivize, you know, how they supposed to get things done. I know we have done that through competency framework. We have tried to do that with, the, with my company and we have implemented a robust one. And does it work? In some cases, and I understand the rationale behind it. However, it did not eliminate the problem because the problem is on the shop floor. The problem is that when we invite um, uh, leaders and managers to conferences, to speak, to events, even your monthly employee get together, just, you know, if you are a hotelier, you will understand. And I don't know if it's in the other industry, but if you get together, all of these town halls is all about business performance. We never talk about other people. And when we want to talk about other people, we call HR. Can you please talk about other people? And those HR people, they never met the people who they're actually talking about. So maybe we should start pushing path, um, leaders and managers towards talking about their people. And we also should ask the, com uh, the question from ourselves. What does performance look like in today's world? Because performance, we equate it with productivity and performance, we equate it with, with KPIs and business results, right? But is this really the one? Because if, if this is the one, then the pressure should look like as these formulas were built back in 100 years ago in the factory industry, in, in factories, right? But the landscape has changed. So how did they apply pressure? 
it's by forcing everybody between certain hours, you know, to produce. That was the daily KPI. You need to achieve 100, whatever. And we do that, and there is nothing wrong with it. But, you know, the, the employees have changed. And leaders back in 100 years ago, they were, people were more obedient, if I, if I have to say it this way. Today, people push back. And, and, and leaders are not trained or equipped to consider that people will push back. They are not going to be these obedient, clock-abiding citizens of your organization because when things don't go wrong, they are going to tell you. They are not going to take the pressure. And then they will vote with their feet. And then leaders and managers complain, oh, nobody wants to work. Well, they do want to work. It's just the pressure that you are applying is maybe disproportionate, right? Maybe it's not even justifiable because I have been pressured even after reaching my goals and KPIs. Now, I'll give you another example, which I just remembered. I had a GM and I don't know, you guys, this is going to make you laugh because I had GMs in my life. Some of them are crazier than others. But this one was, and I learned from him. So we have reached, the, uh, achieved our uh, annual budget by, the, by, by October, that was in 2012, and, or 13, 12, 13, Dubai was booming. And in, by October, we achieved our revenue budget. And we were selling rooms crazy prices. So, and, and we had 10%, you know, occupancy left, I mean, 90% uh, occupancy and my GM putting off the pressure, right? So this is what I mean when really easing the pressure and sometimes it's immediate, short term, sometimes it's a long term. So what my, we were discussing, we were in a HOD meeting and we said, okay, we have achieved annual, our annual budget, we're good to go, you know, whatever we make after this is, is a bonus. And my GM said, close the distribution channels now. And I'm like, what? I'm like, Don't close. We want to sell. We, we are hotelier. We sell the roof. And he said, close the distribution channels now. I don't want to sell any more rooms. We're going to run on 90%. I don't take occupancy to the bank. I take money. We already have that. And also, what he wanted to do is ease the pressure for next year. He said, if I keep making that much money, next year they are going to ask me more money and I'm going to push you even further what you have done this year. And this is when I learned. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. Like nobody would ever say stop selling. But this is exactly what my GM said. Stop selling. We're going to run on 90% occupancy. And then I had other GMs who thought that was wrong, you know, and she would, we, we would run um, hotel annual occupancy of 106% because all she wanted is turning the hotel around, you know, twice a day. So, but that was a constant pressure. How did she ease the pressure? She was with us when we were in a very difficult situation and she was the GM and we had nowhere to book out because London was fully booked. She was, I'm here. I will find a room for you guys. You do not stress about that. So how do we take the pressure off other people? This is the question today. And I want to summarize it and just wrap this up and really ask yourself the question and maybe the leaders you are dealing with, just ask them, how do you ease the pressure? How do you, how often do you sit back, step back and just ask, can I push my team? Can I not push my team? How far can I push them? Who is showing the signs of, you know, I can't take it anymore? Who is showing the signs of, I can still run another 10 miles, you know? It's like a marathon. And, and how do you, what are the tactics that you, or, the, or, you know, that you do in order to ease the pressure? I have given you guys three examples, so you need to use it um, in, in the context of your business. But ask these questions from your leaders and I guarantee you that many of them will not have the answer because we've been told and taught many, many times that keep pushing, keep pushing, even when we have nothing else to give, just keep pushing because then we will teach you how to handle pressure. <laughs> 
So thank you so, so much. Don't push yourself. It's Friday afternoon. Nobody is supposed to work on Friday afternoon. Sorry, that's just my, my approach to work on Fridays. But hey, make the best of it and, and pay attention to your team members. Ask them, guys, are you up for another push or you need a break? And you decide together what that break looks like. Obviously, it's not about stopping working because that's just not fair. Thank you so, so much and enjoy the, uh, the, enjoy the weekend. See you next week.